Okay, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about cancer treatment because having, well, so obviously my mum has cancer, has a tumour produced by bladder cancer. She no longer has a bladder, but the tumours are still there. And she's had a fair bit of treatment for it. Now, the thing that happens when somebody has cancer is that suddenly everybody becomes an oncologist. Everybody has seen this treatment, knows somebody who was treated by this treatment. Some people are sending me Word documents that explain why X, Y, and Z is the way to cure all cancer. And it's fine up to a point, and it depends on what the treatment is whether it is fine to be pushing it, to be saying something. Um, so yeah, I'd say that there are the simple ones. So I've got an aunt of mine who sent me a Word document saying that proven effective is, if memory serves, basically mixing aloe with water and drinking like three pints of that a day or something like that. And I'll say, proven to kill the cancer and you know I sent back to her that sounds good proven where and I didn't get back a response from that which was weird because proven was written in all caps so I'm sure they had a source for that proof And then there's the, there's, there's another side of it is, so I had, a, I had one cousin who was saying that, that, that she had another cousin who had a very good oncologist and that I should try and finagle the scan results, the latest results that, from, from the various scans that my mum's had um, and get them over to us so they can see if they think there's something else that they can do. And I said, sure, I'll do that. Um, and so what I did was I finagled it by going to my uh, my mum's oncologist and saying, um, would we be able to get the scan so that we can send it to somebody for a second opinion? And she said, yeah, sure. You know, give us their details, we'll set up a conference call. Um, and then when I told my cousin about that, for some reason, I never got the details for a conference call. Uh, and then we have the, the, the reason I'm doing this today is where, where today um, my my cousin's ex is an oncologist and saying okay so there is a there is a sort of immunotherapy style thing that they're doing in Canada which could be helpful and um, I said well okay we'll get in touch with with the oncologist and we'll see see how it works and it's like oh no, it's fine, you know, I'll get him to send you the details. So it's like, well, no, I mean, you know, if he's an oncologist, she's an oncologist, it's best that they talk it out between themselves, and at the very least she'll be able to give him all the scan results and everything. She's like, no, 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 I've already told him everything he needs to know. It's like, how? I mean, I, as the primary carer, as the person whose job it is to know about these things, have never looked at her biopsies, I've never looked at her numbers, I've never looked at her scans, what information are you possibly sending him that is giving him proof positive? I forgot to put hold on. Hang on. That is giving him proof positive that this treatment could work for her and will be effective for her. There's no way that's happening. And she gets all, all huffy about it. You know, how dare I suggest that her treatment not be the thing that's going to cure my mum's cancer? Um. And it's this annoying thing where obviously everybody wants to help, I get that. But everyone has to understand that as with so many of these things I've been talking about, 
since I've started Movember, some things are complicated. And that is why we have people who study these things so they can understand these things and put the effort into looking at these things to becoming experts on these things. And then we'll spend time looking over the actual issue itself and trying to work out the appropriate solutions for it. These are not things that you work out by reading a couple of articles, especially unsourced articles about alternative medicines, because as I'm very much not the first to say, as soon as you prove an alternative medicine, it stops being alternative. And this is the thing about cancer especially. You know, cancer is not one disease, cancer is thousands of diseases, and many of them are effectively brand new. Cancer happens when a part of your DNA randomly mutates, and being that you have millions of pieces to your DNA, that means that you have millions of random mutations that can happen. And in fact, these mutations are happening every day to everybody, you know? You are regularly producing cancer in your own body. And your body is seeing that, saying, ooh, that's not right, and getting rid of it. It's only when something happens which the body can't recognize as being wrong, that's when the kind of cancer that we worry about happens. And that's what things like immunotherapy are trying to combat. They're trying to teach the body, okay, if you see this thing, which at the moment you don't care about, but which you should be caring about, if you see this thing happening, kill it. And that's how all these immunotherapies work. But what that means, is that when you say to somebody, oh, you know, I've told them everything about your, your aunt's cancer, unless you've been looking at the biopsies, unless you know what particular behavior that tumor has, then you don't, you know? There's no way that, I mean, that's a, that, that, once again, there is a way that this particular treatment that has no side effects, and it's quite expensive, apparently. Um, could somehow treat all cancers. If it did, rest assured that everybody would be screaming it from the rooftops because it's extremely effective and quite expensive, which means there's a lot of money to be made from it. And yet somehow, our oncologist hasn't suggested it to us. It may well be that it's one of these situations where it's still in trials in Britain or something like that. And fine. But that's something that I'd want the oncologist to decide. Because once again, they are the people that not only know about the subjects, but know my mum's particular case. So, you know, there's a, um, there's a great YouTube channel called Healthcare Triage, um, which is a doctor explaining healthcare to people. So it explains it from what certain diseases are to what certain treatments are, to how healthcare systems work, all that sort of thing. It would be good. I used to have a live show, which you would do every week. And in that live show, people would ask questions. And if it was about, you know, healthcare systems and things like that, absolutely you'd go into detail about how it all works. But if it was something along the lines of, I have X problem, what should I do about it? Then he'd always start with, I am not your doctor. That was always an important thing. It's not just, I am not a doctor, it's I'm not your doctor. I have not seen your medical history. I cannot judge on your medical history and it would be irresponsible of me to judge on your medical history, is what he would say to people, or words to that effect. And then he might give some general ideas of what kind of things people should be looking out for, but the general advice was always go to your doctor. If you do not trust your doctor, go to another doctor. But make sure it's a doctor that actually knows your history. 
that is qualified, that is competent in whatever it is that you want to talk about. And it is such an important point. And it's, it's something you've got to keep in mind as well. Whenever you say to somebody, oh, I had that thing and I fixed it by doing this thing. You don't know that the thing they have is the thing that you had or that your sister had or that whoever had um, that you totally found a cure for because, you know, you could have been a doctor, you just weren't. And, yeah, you've got to, you can't, you know, yeah, we want to fix problems, but we, problems are not easy to fix, otherwise they wouldn't be problems. They would just be minor setbacks that we say, oh, that's a problem that we had and we fixed it because fixing it's easy. You have to be prepared to admit that some problems are big and need big solutions from people that have experience dealing with those big solutions. And that's something as small and as personal as cancer treatment, something as big as global politics and diplomacy. So, yeah. If you are not a doctor, please stop telling people that you have the cure for their illnesses. Absolutely let them know about things. Well, I mean, this is, this is also why, you know, around here it's illegal to advertise pharmaceuticals to people. Because you shouldn't be going to your doctor and saying, have you thought of this? Your doctor knows about these things, especially with something like my, my mum's oncologist. They always talk over their patients in groups. They always have team meetings where they get together and they talk about all the different solutions they have. You know, you're, when, when you talk to my mother's oncologist, you're not getting a first opinion. You're getting first, second, third, fourth opinion. You, you know, lots of people have been debating this, have been looking at this, have been trying to work out the solution to this. She's just the point person on that team. Um, you know, they are not an organ. And sometimes you just have to trust in that process. And it's fine. If you, if you want to... If you want to go in, if you want to investigate, if you want to become an expert in these kinds of things, then you want to do the legwork on it. Absolutely, go for it. If you want to tell me that no, she needs to go vegan, that will fix her because oxygen and stuff, then no, please kindly fuck off. There you go.